people travel for various reasons. Some under pressure to make a living. Some in search of inner peace. The Silk Road, an international economy and culture hub. As infinite wealth flowed through it, the greatest thinking of mankind also blended together there. As time goes on, the face of the Silk Road has changed. Yet the surging motivation within people's hearts has never faded. This is a brand new Silk Road. This is a brand new story on the Silk Road. The Silk Road passes through some of the harshest landscapes in the world. The Duku Highway starts from Kuju in South Xinjiang to Dushanzi in the north, running for a total of 536 kilometers. The Duku Highway can only be used for five months in the year. Threats to it include temperature, avalanches, landslides, and loose boulders collapsing from above at any time. These boulders are heavily eroded, as if they exist solely to kill. This is a dangerous job. Hanging at 20 meters in the air, the only thing one can rely on is a regular strand of rope. Stop now! South, south! Go from the south! The harsh weather makes the job especially difficult. Installing protective nets on these sheer cliffs pays 60 renminbi for every hole drilled. This handsome reward prompts the workers to take the risk. This is a road with the harshest natural environment in the world. Even in the summer, the workers have to put on woolen jackets to fight against the cold at high altitude. Bring the rope over. Yes, bring the hanging net over. Every year, from November to May, the road is closed due to heavy snow. The workers must finish maintenance on the road before winter sets in. Countless ordinary people's hard work keeps the journey smooth and the road safe. To Nai from Thailand, building a Buddhist temple in the heart of China is the biggest challenge he has ever faced. In the 30 years of his career, Nai has built countless Buddhist temples. This time, he has already been working in China for three years. I can't remember anymore. I didn't record it, but many, really many, approximately 30 to 40 temples. I started when I was 15, and now I'm 45. I've been doing this for 30 years. 100 meters from the worksite lies the oldest Buddhist temple in China, Bai Ma Temple. Destruction and rebuilding lace through its 2,000 years of history. In this international Buddhist park, an ambitious project is being implemented. Ah, 
in an area of 1,300 mu, which equals five to six more Baima temples, Buddhist structures integrating styles from around the world are being built. This dreamlike landscape is expected to take 10 years to complete. Luoyang is an ancient city in central China and one of the most important cities on the Silk Road. In 67 BC, Bai Ma Temple was completed in Luoyang. It was the first Buddhist temple in mainland China and it symbolized the official entry of this foreign religion onto the lives of the Chinese. Less than 10 kilometers from Luoyang, at Longman Stone Caves, there are 2,300 niches and over 100,000 statues. It is a miracle from 1,300 years ago. Varanasi, India has a mysterious connection to Luoyang. To this day, it is still a common, sacred land for different religions. Two thousand five hundred years ago, Siddhartha Gautama finished his first sermon here, telling his five disciples about his thoughts on the world over the past decades. This symbolized the birth of Buddhism. From that point on, this emerging religion started to be spread around the world. It took about 500 years for Buddhism to travel along the Silk Road into China. This is a religious trail that crossed over a thousand years. It possesses infinite power power which has changed history. Wu Wei Gansi, an ancient oasis city with a population of one million. At the heart of the city is a Buddhist temple, Kumarajiva Temple. Forty-one-year-old Li Feng graduated six years ago from Sri Lanka with a PhD in Buddhism. He is the chief monk of this temple. Today, Li Feng is the busiest man here. Numerous worshippers have gathered in the temple to prepare for a religious ritual for the maintenance project on Kumaranjiva's relic tower. Li Feng must play a good host. Yes, you'll be in Wu Wei on the 3rd? Yes, yes, we'll look forward to seeing you on the 3rd. Is this the old sir's grandson? Tell me your name. Tell me your name and I'll make arrangements. I'll have my staff arrange things. Kumarajiva Temple is the center of life for many locals. A grandson? He's already a high school senior this year? Yes, high school, third year. Yes, good. Yes, it'll do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people. Money, uh, don't give the money to me. Take it downstairs and give it to guest reception. Yes, yes, yes. Bye-bye. Kumarajiva was the most famous monk in China 1,600 years ago. He lived in Wu Wei for 17 years. This is the only temple named after Kumarajiva. Since Kumarajiva, the Buddhist school of thought changed to become mainly under the frame of Mahayana Buddhism. The idea of Bodhisattva also came from there. After Kumarajiva passed away, people built a relic tower here. Deep, complicated philosophical thoughts require simpler, more approachable expression. Kumarajiva perfectly interpreted Buddhist scriptures in Chinese. 
he was the most important translator in Chinese Buddhism. To 70-year-old Bill Porter, China is a most familiar country. It's Xinjiang. Over 20 years ago, Bill Porter became famous overnight due to Road to Heaven, his book exploring a group of modern-day Chinese hermits. Because I was probably Chinese in a past life, I was probably a monk. This is Mr. Bill. May I just call you Bill? Would that be rude? You may. Beijing's Faoyuan Temple, which started construction 1,400 years ago, is now the greatest academic institution on Chinese Buddhism. This is Bill Porter's first time to this temple. Seven years ago, he once did a trip to China to research the developmental network of Buddhism. Based on that trip, he completed another bestseller, Zen Baggage which introduced to Americans the deep, complicated thinking of Zen. The success of Road to Heaven changed Bill Porter's relationship with China and completely changed his destiny. Every time he came to China, Bill Porter would take a walk somewhere he likes. This time, he has to pick out a birthday gift for his daughter. Are you from Wengang? I am. Wengang people. Wengang people can make calligraphy brushes. How do you know that? I'm quite familiar with calligraphy brushes. Twenty? Ten. That's about it. Bill Porter feels a strong bond towards everything related to China. He often thinks about those recluses deep in the mountains. No one will try to control you in the mountains. They are all farmers, hermits. There are hermits. There are farmers, no one else. Many Americans like this book, but not as many as the Chinese. Meetings with the press make Bill Porter's schedule even busier. When interviewed, the reporters often begin with his famous works. This time, Bill Porter is in China to promote his new book, Yellow River Odyssey. A few months later, his other book will also be published. It is based on his experience 20 years ago. The book is called A Journey on the Silk Road from Xi'an to Islamabad. Bye-bye. In Zhongnan Mountain, Shanxi, 1,000 kilometers from Beijing, the people Bill Porter described still continue their training in the woods. The Zhongnan shortcut, for a thousand years, Zhongnan Mountain has always been the ideal training ground for Chinese Buddhists. For many Chinese people nowadays, this is a mysterious life that stirs up one's yearning. Master Jia, 30 years old, is a Buddhist who trains alone on Zhongnan Mountain. In traditional Chinese culture, being a hermit insinuates giving up fame and riches and enduring solitude. To achieve all this nowadays is no easy feat. When he was young, Master Jia developed an interest in Buddhism. After he graduated from university, he became a theater doctor. Despite the unstable income, it allowed him to arrange his schedule better and live the way he truly wanted to. 
Attending drama rehearsals is Master Jia's impromptu role. Look how much like a eunuch he is. Express his repressed side. Cohesion. Remember this about your role. He was a noble in the Qing dynasty, but with the empire's decline, he became a common civilian. You should let this aristocracy come through. We'll ask him to smooth this dialogue out today. That day, I went into a diner and I had a bowl. All right, all right, stop, stop, stop. Stop and then say the dialogue. The two of you still need to interact more with the audience. I heard. Buddhism has given Master Jia his own interpretation of performance. <laughs> to create a character, we need to put ourselves in a position looking at it. Zen, on the other hand, wants you to break out of I. It's who am I? We can use Western performance training tactics to answer this question, to let more people take in this unique religious experience directly. This comedy, acted in the local Xi'an dialect, has already had over 40 performances. However, faced with budget problems, the play may be terminated at any time. For thousands of years, thoughts and ideas were spread on the Silk Road. No matter how times change and how the path changes, humans' pursuit of faith remains eternal. On today's Silk Road, countless people are living out their faith. The search for spiritual enlightenment continues. Seven thousand kilometers west of Jongnan Mountain is Cappadocia, a tourist hotspot in central Turkey and the shooting location for countless movies. The unique terrain and scenery here makes it Turkey's most eye-catching tourist attraction. Hussein Kula lives in Cappadocia. His work starts at 4 a.m. every day. This is mostly hard work. To support his family, he has to keep working until 8 p.m. Hussein has a one and a half acre vineyard. It is the main source of income for his family. In Cappadocia, Hussein still lives the traditional way. He lives with his family. He has almost never left the city he lives in. <laughs> there are many amazing ancient ruins in Hussein's hometown. The Derinkuyu underground city is a magical place like a planet from outer space. There are a total of 11 levels of winding tunnels, the deepest of which is 85 meters below ground level. This was a secret paradise built by early Christians running from the persecution of the Roman Empire. Today's travelers may find it hard to understand the choice these Christians made. The Christians finally conquered the Roman Empire and that powerful empire back then finally collapsed into ruins in the wild grass. Zhongnan Mountain is the ideal paradise on Earth for the Chinese. It is also the cradle of various sects of Chinese Buddhism. To the ordinary person, Living in solitude somewhere remote always seems somewhat romantic, yet it is not so simple in reality. Calligraphy is the most classic Chinese symbols. 
a bridge between reality and history. Apart from studying Buddhist scriptures, calligraphy practice takes up most of Master Jia's time. Xi'an houses the most important calligraphy works from ancient China. This 1,300-year-old steel is a protected national treasure. It represents the first traces of Christianity in China. The religion was called Nestorianism at that time. Nestorianism, Manichaeism, and Zoroastrianism were the three major religions in ancient Persia. They all once spread to China through the Silk Road. Cappadocia, Turkey. After a day of hard work, breadmaster Hussein can finally relax and play with his two children. Playing with his two children give him the happiest and the warmest moments in his life. Hussein is a Sufi believer. It is an Islamic sect with the tradition of doing penance, similar to that of the reclusive lifestyle in China. They believe adhering to a poor, simple life can strengthen their faith. Every weekend, Breadmaster Hussein's identity changes. The Sufi's unique and elegant Sama ceremony was founded by mysterious theologian and philosopher Rumi 80 years ago. The Sufi order advocates love and tolerance and are called whirling dervishes. They are a unique cultural symbol in Turkey. Turning 25 times every minute is no easy task. Beginners of the Sama dance must practice hard for seven months on wooden boards scattered with salt to grasp the basics. Konya became sacred ground due to Rumi's grave. Rumi created a large number of religious writings and beautiful poetry here. These writings were spread across the world. In the fourth century, as Christianity became the Roman Empire's state religion, Buddhism also started to be widely spread in the East via the Silk Road. At 4 a.m. in Bishan Temple, the biggest temple on Wutai Mountain, Monk Yiju welcomes a new day. Yiju hasn't been in the temple for long. His hometown is in the northeast of China. Before he became a monk, he was a businessman. Bishan Temple has 100 resident monks and is famous for its strict rules. In accordance with traditions thousands of years old, Yiju's every move must adhere to the rules. In today's China, many monks lead similar lifestyles. In the temple, every basic task in life is training, including eating. Come on in. Amitabha, Amitabha. What would you like to get? Do you have eggplants? Eggplants, yes. It's all here. Unlike the time before he became a monk, Yiju can't bargain when buying anything. Long-time bonds and mutual trust make things simple. Thank you, boss. 
Take care, master. Thank you. To the ordinary person, temple life is monotonous and hard and quite unbearable. Two years ago, two others from Yiju's hometown who became monks the same time he did have chosen to leave. In a few days, Yiju will be leading a prayer ritual in the temple. For this young monk, the journey in pursuit of faith has only just begun. Similarly, on Zhongnan Mountain, 900 kilometers from Wutai Mountain, Master Jia's training continues. Today, his friend's family is coming to visit. Master Jia plans to greet them with the most special food. The host has overseen every step. This is an unforgettable dinner gathering. Your mom gave you a task to bring me food. This is like offering to monks. Send whatever I like. Take the bus here. The party classes last half a month. Then I'm going to Tangshan. I'm not studying Chinese medicine with Master Guo Liang. Without hard work, there is no food. For Master Jia, the hard work of farming is also training. Five kilometers away is Cao Tang Temple, where Kumara Jiva translated Buddhist scriptures long ago. 30 kilometers away is Xi'an, the starting point of the Silk Road. It is an ancient, historical city. For over 2,000 years, it has been involved in countless major historical events in China. In 401 AD, Kumara Jiva ended his 17-year house arrest in Wu Wei and came to Chang'an to translate Buddhist scriptures. More than 200 years later, the monk Xuan Zhuang, well known among the Chinese, returned to Chang'an with Buddhist scriptures from India. The two revered monks brought China into a truly religious age. Xi'an's Cao Tong Temple is a relic tower built by the people 1,000 years ago to commemorate Kumara Jiva. Here, Kumara Jiva translated a total of 97 Buddhist scrolls, the most famous of which was the Diamond Sutra. Despite only having a mere 5,780 words, the Diamond Sutra is the greatest Buddhist scripture and the summary of all Buddhist classics. Kumara Jiva's translated version is still in use to this day. The Diamond Sutra contains elegant, smooth prose that accurately conveyed the original meaning of the scripture. It explains complicated Mahayana Buddhist teachings in the form of stories. Due to Kumara Jiva's translations, Buddhism in China started developing independently finally becoming the common faith of the entire nation in the East. For thousands of years, from Eurasia to China, history has left behind countless stunning miracles on the Silk Road. The Art Corridor that extends for thousands of kilometers is the Silk Road's most precious gift for China.
Early each morning, Zhou Gang and his colleagues must carefully inspect all the exposed statues and murals. Having been eroded by the wind and rain for thousands of years, these precious works of art are extremely vulnerable. This is peeling quite badly. This one is round. Put in a mortise and tenon. Of the four great Buddhist stone caves in China, the scenery at Maijishan, Tian Shui, is the most beautiful. However, no scenery can compare to the beautiful sculptures here. The maintenance crew are restoring Cave 127, built during the Northern Wei period 1,600 years ago. Every one of these sculptures, which came to China because of Buddhism, is priceless. Lean on the rock face, behind this Buddha statue. See that? If it moves again, move it in further. The Maijishan stone caves still contain 194 niches, over 7,800 earth sculptures and stone carvings, and over 1,000 square meters of murals. This should be the most original. To the maintenance crew, the hardest part of the restoration process is not the precious sculptures. In order to restore the ancient mural in the caves, they must have a detailed plan. 70 meters above ground is the height they must climb at least twice every day. 1,600 years ago, these murals were alive. The work is as fine and intricate as surgery. Every person can only restore a few square centimeters every day. It is a challenge for both the restorer's patience and meticulousness. This is actually a very boring job. But when you put your heart into it, you'll find it quite interesting. As winter arrives, the restoration process stops. Far away from the city, with the hard work of the guardians of Maijishan, there is hope for the rebirth of the stone caves. Kumara Jiva Temple, Wu Wei. Li Feng continues to work hard for the renovation of the relic tower. I've invited the chief of the Cultural Relics Bureau over as well. Then all the parties can sit down and settle some decisions preliminarily. Hello, hello. I've connected to the internet now and can see your list. I can see it all. Please don't worry. We are moving as quickly as possible. We're making arrangements now. We'll be having a meeting in the afternoon. With regards to the renovation of the relic tower, we'll let the government leaders decide. Your donations will soon be used entirely on the construction of the relic tower. Yes, that's all. Bless you. Yes. Bye. One must pass through Wu Wei from the Silk Road to Chang'an. It is also the earliest place where Buddhism reached China. Today, the influences of the Silk Road on this city can still be found everywhere. In Kumarajiva Temple, the restoration project of the Relic Tower is also under discussion. Our main hall is already here now. Could we move the tower directly back a little? The tower is cultural heritage too. It's also architecture from the Ming Dynasty. It's very ancient, but could we move it directly back behind the temple? Lift it up and move it back? Kumarajiva Temple is the only ancient building on the temple grounds and is the most significant. Maintenance for the relic tower equals that of religious faith. It requires generation after generation of nurturing over a long, long time. Whenever he is on break, Nai looks at photos of his family. Apart from calling home, 
This is the only way to relieve his yearning for them. I didn't want to come at first because I'd have to leave home. I miss home. But this may be the only chance to come to China in my life. The afternoon sun is warm, and it is a rare moment of leisure in a day. However, Nai doesn't feel relaxed at all. The first prayer ceremony will be held on the worksite in three days. This means work progress on the main hall must be sped up. An unexpected visitor broke the heavy atmosphere. Due to language barriers, the Thai craftsmen seldom interact with the outside world. A pack of stray dogs in the temple has become his beloved pets. Only in those moments can Nye forget about his tense and heavy workload. The next day, Nai gets up very early. He has decided to pay his respects to Bai Ma Temple, right across from the work site. In the Chinese-style main hall, Nai prays reverently according to Thai Buddhist ways. He hopes for the smooth completion of the project and that there will be no accidents at the work site. To the Thai people, the Buddha must be honored, worshipped, and respected. With regards to Buddhism, the Thai and the Chinese are the same. Back at the worksite, things are still tense and busy. Construction work on the Thai Buddhist temple is nearing an end, but Nai still has to carry out some final touch-ups on the color paintings in the main hall. On the other side of the worksite, there are people who are preparing for the upcoming ritual. At that moment, Nai, who has been wound up tight for days, finally relaxes. To this common craftsman, the scene before him will be his unforgettable glory. Since ancient times, religion has been tied to one's inner peace and an eternal place of rest. The Silk Road spread knowledge and religion along its pathways molding the hearts of billions of people. 600 kilometers away, in Wutai Mountain's Bishan Temple, a grand ritual is about to begin. Yi Ju must calm his nerves in hosting the first ritual of his life. The sacred moment is here. All the monks in the temple are at the Buddha Hall. Every ritual and item are set according to thousand-year-old traditions. It 
it is finally Yiju's turn. This is a complicated ritual. Every monk needs one year of practice. The entire ritual was flawless. Yiju has performed perfectly. Yiju finally took the first step on his long journey of training. In Wu Wei, the commencement ceremony on Kumara Jiva's relic tower is about to begin. After months of busy work, the funds for the tower renovation have been settled. At this moment, Li Fang has found an easy sense of calm. Firecrackers, we have firecrackers too. <laughs> I also sent some people with some extra firecrackers. They bought the firecrackers to set up themselves. Now I am happy to announce that the tower renovation officially starts. The Kumara Jiva Relic Tower has been renovated and repaired countless times in 1300 years and continues to stand in the center of this ancient city as a symbol of inner faith. After a few months, Master Jia from Jungnan Mountain has finally shaved his head to become a true monk. His temple name is Ke Yi. To the average person, this means giving up all ties to the outside world. I used to have a family. I had a family. Buddhist teachings say that one of our important good works is to set things free, set things free out of compassion. I told my ex-wife that she is doing something very good. Other people set fish or shrimps free, but you set me free. Whether he is Master Jia or Ke Yi, it is merely a change in identity. Life on the mountains remains the same. Training in solitude leads his restless heart towards tranquility. He hopes to immerse himself in this kind of training, different from most temples. Koyi believes perseverance will take him closer to his faith. My family seems to support me on this path as well, especially my mother. She is an interesting old lady. After I became a monk, she doesn't use my old name anymore. She only calls me Master Kai. Training in solitude means loneliness, emptiness, and being alone. A strong mind is not enough. Kai believes basic medical knowledge is a skill a Buddhist should also have as well. Faith should be applied to everyday life. It should guide us in life. It can't be in conflict with our lives. Master Ke Yi's greatest wish is to become a spiritual mentor. He believes it is a social responsibility he should shoulder as a monk. Between the outside world and his spiritual training, Master Jia, now Master Ke Yi, tries hard to attain an intricate balance. In Luoyang, a grand prayer ceremony is about to begin at Bai Ma Temple. It is a large-scale ceremony attended by both Chinese and Thai monks.
Nye conducts a final inspection on his work. I can go home and tell everyone I left this Thai style in China. It makes me feel proud. This Buddha statue from Thailand symbolizes wealth. It will be placed in a Chinese Buddhist temple hall. As a devout Buddhist, this is Nye's proudest moment of his life. Thousands of years ago, Buddhism spread in various different directions. Today, at the easternmost end of the ancient Silk Road, they finally come back together. Eroded by wind and rain, forged through water and fire, the Silk Road thus gained its appearance. Yet it is the actions of the people that decided the spirit of the road. They are the promoters of culture on today's Silk Road. And they foretell the future of the Silk Road. Everything they do not only influences China, but it will also greatly affect the world. I actually don't find myself pretty. I've always been plain and pale. Everyone calls me Little Grey. On the other end of the Silk Road, Wang Qiqing stepped onto the international stage. Distant worlds influence one another, even to this day. The Silk Road, a renewed journey. Episode 6, exploring the world's extremities. Where is the starting point on today's Silk Road? People search for new lives on this ancient road. What motivates these migrating footsteps? It brought the secret of silk from China to Europe. It brought rice from East Asia to India. And it spread schools of thought and religion around the world. As time goes by, the Silk Road starts and ends at various points. Yet the surging power from the people's hearts have never dissipated. This is an all new Silk Road. This is an all-new story on the Silk Road.